Thank you for coming to the Persona 5 panel. I'm Elizabeth Maxwell, and uh, in Persona 5, I have the great honor of playing Prosecutor Sai Nijima. <laughs> Proud older sister of Makoto. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm Erica Harlicker, and I play On in Persona 5. Um, I, I, I like to joke, somebody, I did not make this up, somebody else on Twitter made it up, they're like, Sai is best woman. <laughs> In person, yeah. I don't know, but the doctor, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, so, I assume everybody in here likes Persona 5. questions or something else. I don't I don't mind too much if you Yeah, yeah, you guys, guys can ask us about other things. <laughs> but mostly for some of assume. That's why you're here. Um, so we have a microphone over here and then people can line up in front of it. Very good. <laughs> Early bird gets the microphone. Yeah. Showing people the way. Thank you. Um, and yeah, let's do it. <laughs> That thing's on. Okay. All right. Um, so, what do you two expect to see for Persona 5 Royal now that that's coming out next year? Oh, man. I expect so many things. I want to find the answers to what Persona 5 Royal is about. Um, and I need to know. I also need to know if Mangana is going to hit on On at all because it's going to be really weird and awkward and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, everybody's always linking me to that video. <laughs> Romance option. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would hope for. Oh, that would be great. Option. I want a side romance option. I know. I mean, I kind of understand why they didn't put it in the first one. It's a little... I mean, yeah. It's a tricky, tricky, uh, <laughs> tricky situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who in here, by the way, has anyone in here not finished Persona 5? All right. Well, well, we'll try not to spoil you completely with our answers. We'll try to talk in code. Um, but yeah. Yes. I have a good excuse for not finishing though. It's because I acquired Zelda and Blood Breath of the Wild and Persona 5 at the same time. And I promised myself that I would not play them simultaneously. Oh, yeah. I was like, I have to finish one yeah. before I start the other. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so excited about the switch that I, I picked Zelda to start first. So I'm a traitor. It's okay. <laughs> hundred percenter. I am a hundred percenter in, in story. Like I need to know all the story, but I'm okay if I leave a couple treasures and trophies and badges behind on yeah. the world map somewhere. Yeah. Well, and you know the story for Persona 5 because we recorded it. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for your question. And I like your shirt. Yes. <laughs> Hello, uh, first and foremost, thank you guys so much for coming to Oticon. You guys are like really awesome. Oh, um, so, uh, my question was because um, I know, uh, Erica, you're like a really big Kingdom Hearts fan. Uh, so, this is like my first non persona question. Has there ever actually been, for, for the both of you, has there ever been like any sort of like video game or anime dream job that you always wanted to do or an anime that, like, that's like a favorite of yours that you always wanted to like voice a character on? Um, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I did. So, okay. yay! Um, and then my fiance proposed to me because he was like, best day of your life, probably. <laughs> Don't want to compete. <laughs> so, yay! Um, I would want to do um, like Yu Gi Oh! or Pokemon or something like that. Those are, you know, classics. That's true, I'm in the Moon now. Yay! It's, it's similar, but not the same. <laughs> Um, I have both a video game and an anime one, um, so for video games, I'm not saying that I necessarily think that they should go ba back and remake Chrono Trigger, but if they do, I want to 
gonna be Luca. <laughs> she was like a hero of mine growing up. I was like, she's nerdy, but she's still cool. Because <laughs> I was making fun of so badly in grade school as a big old nerd. Um, and uh, it's actually kind of funny. One of my favorite animes of all time is Escaflowne. And um, I was working at Funimation when they cast the redub of Escaflowne and somehow missed the memo. Um, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't know who I would have really been cast in in that show anyways. There's not like a lot of characters that super fit my voice profile, but I remember finding out, I was at Funimation and I found out that casting had finished for that and I had one of those literal like fell to my knees and was like, no! <laughs> moments. Um, so yeah, I missed the boat two times on that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi. Hello. It's fun, isn't it? It's fun, <laughs> nice things. I'm going to order cards this year. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Yeah, we're excited to be here. All right. Um, hmm. How long have you two been uh, doing voice acting for? I've been curious for quite some time. Uh, yeah, so I have been um, doing voice acting professionally for about five years now. Five years? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I did a lot of on-camera acting before I started voiceover, but VO specifically, five years. I think it's been like seven years for me, which is crazy. <laughs> That's almost a decade. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Uh, then, then. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you do Do you do just voiceover, or do you do on camera as well? Yeah, I do voiceover <laughs> because I was scarred by my acting teacher in uh, theater in college. He was like, "You're too tall to be on camera." Yeah, and I was like, mm, "They don't be a voice actor. They don't care how tall I am." But now that I'm more confident, I'm like, "Maybe I should do on camera." So I'm thinking about it. Yeah. But. So far, little young Erica was like, I'll just be behind the microphone then, and they can adjust it to my height. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, for one, at least you're the height now, being part of Persona 5 voice acting cast. Yay! So, yeah. so, question, like, say, um, how was it, like, say, working with other members of the voice acting team for, like, say, Persona 5? Also, um, did you care? The characters you worked on for Persona 5, did they ever make you contemplate or like say think about their life or like say life in general really? Oh, it's a deep question. <laughs> um what was the first part of it? So uh, about what was it like working with the other Oh right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Um so we record separately and we just met today. <laughs> Today's the first time I've ever met Eric. Yeah. So, um, but it, it was great working in proximity to you. <laughs> now meeting you and being on panel with you. Um, so unfortunately we don't actually get to see the other cast members. Sometimes I would see them like in passing, like between sessions and um, that kind of thing. But I like the cast a lot. And the, the times I've gotten to be on panels like this, um, everybody's been so amazing and so cool. It's really awesome to meet them all. Yeah, that's one of my favorite part about conventions is um, not only, you know, obviously getting to meet uh, the fans, but it's also because our, our jobs is, are so solitary. Um, it's oftentimes like the first times that I'll get to meet people that I work on properties with. So it's just like a whole love fest of meeting awesome new people. Yeah. Um, and then their second part of the question was if our characters in Persona 5 made us contemplate life. Yes, or their lives. Okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, I contemplated Anne's life a lot because I recorded for her for months and months and months and months. Um, so I felt like I really, really got to know her really well and her life story. And I had a little backstory in my head. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, she lived in America and she, she like didn't really fit in there either. And well, she came over to Japan and still everybody's like, oh, you're tall. And I was like, I get that. <laughs> deals with a lot of like serious issues uh, and so it does make you think about stuff that goes on in the world and how sometimes you wish there were some persona thieves in real life maybe. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would be a target. 
Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, a lot of mythology and a lot of the, the plots of video games can oftentimes be like fairly black and white. Like it's fairly obvious like who the bad guy is and who the good guy is. And I've always loved about the Persona games that they reflect real life in that things are not that simple. Like there is not a lot of black and white, there's a heck of a lot of gray. Yeah. And with Sai particularly, one of the things that I loved so much about her as a character and how she, she impacted my life and made me think about things is she was a really idealistic person with really lofty, honorable ambitions. And she still ended up having, you know, a castle. Like she still got twisted in ways. And it kind of reminded me that like, not to get too like depressed or intense or deep, but this industry can be that way. It's not an easy industry. You deal with a lot of rejection. You deal with a lot of opinions and critiques that are often not positive. And it kind of reminded me to like step back and take a look at like, how much am I being like negative or cynical or, you know, what, what kind of language am I using in my, you know, self-talk about like myself or my career? And, and it did actually make me kind of be like, oh, I might be getting a little cynical. I maybe need to like step back and make a list of all the things I'm grateful for for a bit. You don't want your own palace to form. No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but if I did, you a really cool palace. Oh man, yeah. One time at a convention, people were like, if, if, if you had a palace, what would it be? And I was like, well, if I had a palace, things have gone wrong in my life. But uh, I would hope that it was something with just like a lot of chocolate everywhere. Like a chocolate. You could be, it could be like Hansel and Gretel, but you're yes. the witch. Yes. And you're and I be be Yes. Oh man, I'd be like, just leave me alone in this palace, okay? <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks for answering my question. Thank Absolutely. you. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. It's all people problems, I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I was actually surprised about that last question about not being able to interact with the cast members because that was going to be my original question. So I guess the second question I wanted to ask was going to be, when it comes to something like Persona Q2, which did unfortunately get an English dub, like, like how did that feel? Like, did you hear that the game coming out and like get excited, like, oh, I can't wait to dub this, and then the studio's like, we don't need you guys, or did it just like come out and you're like, I didn't even know that was a thing? Uh, somewhere in the middle of those. I like, I heard about it cautiously, optimistically. Yeah, and I was like. They'll probably dub that, right? And then they were like, it's coming in like a month. And I was like, I guess we're not. That's <laughs> <laughs> like not enough time to dub it. Um, so yeah, I'm bummed about it, for sure. Yeah, I do remember that, but like finding out like, oh, like I know they don't always uh -huh. dub Persona anime, so I'm like crossing my fingers because Persona 5 did pretty well, it's pretty popular. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. And then, and then yeah, I found out like, oh, it's coming out. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that answers my question. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I think since Q2 came out for the DS, they were like, eh, which is a bummer because I love DS. I was like, I still would have gotten it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a bummer. They don't tell. Basically, they don't tell us anything unless we are going to come in. So the radio silence was like the answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They tell us very little. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Usually fans know everything before I do, and they're like, "So, um, are you doing this uh, blah 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 that was announced three weeks ago?" And I'm like, "What in the what was announced? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know." Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> it's a Kingdom Hearts shirt, just yeah. so everybody knows. <laughs> um, before my question, voice acting is very hard. Um, one could argue it's harder than on-screen acting. Video game voice acting is particularly difficult given the nature of player choice, fragmented script, not you know, not working with your other voice actors. And when Are I played you through, a game designer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I played through Persona 5, I was very, very impressed by the high level of quality of all of the main cast, and I just wanted to compliment you both on the very high level of work you put into that game. I consider you two to be among the best of the best. And oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's a lot. Thank you. A lot of that has to do with our amazing director, yes, I was Val, Valerie yeah. Ann. She did a really good job at making sure we all sounded like we were really in the room talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, PCB, mm -hmm. Atlas, yeah. they're amazing. Yeah, they're awesome. 
Now, my question not super related, but the Smash Brothers announcement oh. back in the, the fall, uh, you know, sort of jumping off that radio silence thing. I know, you know, particularly Nintendo with Smash Brothers, very protective about information getting out. And I know you did some voice work for the little trailer they surprised everybody with. Yes. How were you contacted for that? I mean, was it sort of very last minute they brought you in without telling you, like with a blindfold? Or you know, <laughs> how did that go? How, how early did you know? Uh, so about three weeks before the Game Awards, I got an email from a studio that I really don't work with that often. I would like to work with them, but like I don't, I'm just not really on their list. Uh, and they were like, "We're doing a." Uh, more voices for a game, and they use a code name because they use code names for everything. So I was like, I don't think I was in that game before, but hey, if they want me to come in, whatever, I'll come in and do this work for this game, then I don't know what it is. Um, so I walked in, and Erica Limbeck was walking out of the studio, and she plays Futaba. And so she, <laughs> yeah, so she was like, Do you know what you're here for? And I was like, No. And then she was like, Have fun! And she walked away. <laughs> Okay, so I walked into the studio and they had me sign all of these NDAs uh, and then after I'd signed all this secretive stuff with all the code names and everything on it, they were like, okay, so, I, and I saw like there was a, a video of On up on the screen of like her voiced lines, like a compilation. I was like, that's weird. So I was like, are we doing Persona? Like what's happening? And they were like, yeah, so we're from Nintendo. And we're recording for Smash. And I just started screaming. <laughs> and I was like, are you, guys, are, you pr are you pranking me right now? And they were like, no. And I think it was like a few minutes of me just freaking out. And they were like laughing. And they were like, yeah, it's very cool. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. So this means that Joker is the first DLC? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh my god. So excited. I can't believe it. One of my favorite things about Smash is like the reveal trailers. Because they're so, it's so fun to like suddenly have this character that nobody expected be in Smash Brothers. And I was like, people are gonna lose their minds. <laughs> so excited. So then we, we went in and recorded. In between like every line, you know, they'd, they'd record the lines and they'd be like, okay, hang on just a second. And then so I'd be like, oh my god, is this really real? <laughs> it's really tricking me right now. Um, and a lot of the lines I had to record for the trailer were on freaking out about Smash Brothers, and I was like, I got this, just start recording. <laughs> it's, just, it's just me freaking out. Um, so yeah, that was, Kingdom Hearts and Smash Brothers were like two of my main, like, I want to be in those someday, but like, down the line, because I was like, oh, I'm not big enough to be in those yet. And then I recorded for them in the same week, and I was going to die. <laughs> Um, and then I only had to keep the secret for three weeks, thankfully. I asked them while I was there, I was like, how long are you guys going to make me die with this secret? And they were like, it's at being announced at the Game Awards, so only three weeks. And I was like, thank God. Um, but then they only released the short version of the trailer with Morgana, me, Ryuji, and Joker talking at the Game Awards. And everybody else had recorded for that kind of longer gameplay trailer that they eventually released. And so I was like, I'm, I feel so bad for like Erica Lindbeck and Xanthi and the people who thought they were going to be able to talk about it three weeks and then it took like months for them to finally be able to say that they were also in it. It was so sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was very exciting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of fun. I feel like, well, obviously you guys wouldn't realize this, but the, the, especially the world of video game voiceover is so secretive. It's so secretive. Oh my God. So many secrets. <sighs> yeah. And Nintendo, especially. Oh, especially Nintendo. I know. I was like, all right. I did, I'll just. I walked out of the studio and I was like, I feel like everything's a trap. I can't go see anybody for three weeks because what if I just somebody mentions Smash Brothers in my face? I'm just like. And then they're like, why are you so happy? And I'm like, nothing. No reason. Man. Don't talk to me. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, a lot of people didn't realize this, for Zelda Breath of the Wild, none of us who were cast knew what we were working on until we literally stepped into the studio. Yeah. Like, like you. Yeah, it was like, I was, I signed contracts, <laughs> yeah. like, I did all the legal stuff, booked a flight to LA, walked into the studio and still was like, so what am I doing? Um, I recorded for Killer Instinct, I play Sadira in Killer Instinct. I got cast, recorded the whole thing, left the studio, and 
then eventually like character trailers came out and my now fiance was like, didn't you play like a spider character that speaks Thai and something? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, was it Killer Instinct? And I was like, they didn't say it was Killer Instinct. <laughs> and I, I watched the video and I was like, is that, is that me? It was Killer Instinct the whole time? So they never told me, ever. And then it came out and I was like, oh. <laughs> Guess it was this. <laughs> a lot of secrets going on in the video game industry. Hi. Hi there. So that guy stole my la the last guy stole my question. But I remember. Sorry. Are you sure he didn't steal your line? Yeah. No, definitely not. That's my job. But I remember you playing a little bit of Persona 5 for the video of Atlas's YouTube channel. Me. Did you ever go back and play the whole game again? Yes. Well, so. <laughs> and 80 hours, which I feel like is pretty good. Um, so I haven't played the final, like, 30 hours. It's so many hours, you guys. Um, but I really, yeah, now at this point, I'm waiting for Royal now, and I'm just going to start over and, like, play through Royal. Because at this point, where they're releasing it again with, like, new content. So I'll start from hour zero. But I, I played a lot of it. And I watched some certain scenes on YouTube for like other people playing through them because I wanted to see how they all sounded with all of us together. Like a certain sad Ryuji moment. And I was like, I need to see how this came out. <laughs> came out well. <laughs> right. Also, for you, you said you played Breath of the Wild, then Persona 5, right? Uh -huh. I did the exact opposite. Uh -huh. I wanted to play Persona 5 first. <laughs> I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. I literally, my, my choice hinged solely on my excitement for owning a new Switch, so. <laughs> and that's the only game, I like, after buying the Switch, the only thing, I couldn't afford to buy any other games for the Switch, so I had to play the game it came with. Oh no. <laughs> right, well, thank you. Thank you! Hello. Hi. One, my friend forced me to be here, and two, I'm going to ask both of you. Yeah, yeah. I would like to ask both of you what your favorite things to voice, maybe in Persona 5 or in other things that you worked on. Like, what was your favorite thing to voice? Moment, character, whatever. Just whatever comes to mind. Oh, so many options. <laughs> uh, uh, for me, for Sai, um, it was the scenes with Makoto, with her sister, um, because I feel like their relationship is complicated, and my favorite things to voice are the complicated things where you have to like deal with multiple emotions and and warring, you know, uh, things that you want. Um, and so it's like I feel like we got to both be, see like a, a different side of Sai, and then also see like the complexities of their familial relationship. Um, also, Shadow Sai was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, for keeping things specific to Persona, since it was a Persona panel, um, my favorite on moments are when she's acting. <laughs> really? Yes. They're so much fun. It's so fun to have a director be like, okay, act worse. And I'm like, yes, okay. Um, and also her British. Because uh, they were like, do a bad British accent, and I was like, awesome, I can do that, for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's so much fun. I love those scenes so much. The whole um, Yusuke scene with her big outfit that she puts on. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what? I don't know, maybe the lighting in here is just making me look like I have gained weight or something, I don't know. No, I'm not wearing 500 sweaters. Um, oh man, I love those scenes so much. They're so fun. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you! Um, and I, I hope that you are grateful that your friend forced you to Yes, <laughs> yeah! Thank you for asking your question. <laughs> Hello. Hi! Um, my question is for, uh, both of you are like experienced voice actors. Uh, what advice or tips would you give to people that aspire to be a voice actor? Take classes. Take classes? A lot of classes. Like, even not just specifically voiceover classes, take acting classes. And like, and that's not me saying like, I bet you don't know how to act. It's like, I take classes as often as possible because I think it's really important to like, keep practicing and keep learning. Um, and also that's where you'll, you'll meet other people that are working in the industry and like, maybe they'll get a casting call and they're, they see a role where they're like, oh, that, 
girl that I met in that one class who was really good would be perfect for this role. Maybe I'll see if I can forward that on to her. And then that, that's how you get some roles. <laughs> so much of this industry is about relationships, mm -hmm. more so than I think people realize. Yeah. Um, I have like two, I have like one that's practical and one that's kind of like more like heartsy woo woo y. <laughs> um, and the practical one is uh, I encourage specificity. Um, I know that most actors that I know or creatives, we, we feel like we can do it all, um, which I'm sure that we can, <laughs> but if you get really specific with what you're good at, what's easy for you, what is unique about you, get known for that. Make it easy, make it an easy, easy choice for casting directors or people to know you for that voice, and it will make the casting process a lot easier for you. It will help you uh, achieve roles and success more quickly. And then, you know, once you kind of get known for one thing, then you can branch out and try and get cast against the grain. Um, but specificity, specificity is, is really helpful. And then I also say, this is kind of the more hearty movie one, but um, you will hear no a lot in this business. No, 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 no. You will hear mo no more than you hear yes. And so for me, a huge component of, of my success was surrounding myself with people who supported it in me, supported me and believed in me and said, yes, you can do this. Yes, you can do this. Um, and yeah, finding friends and family who, who, who can give you that support was integral for me. All right, thank you. Thank you. How do you guys put up with criticism by subbelievers? <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that again? By sub, sub versus dub. Elitist, yes. Yeah. Oh, how I feel about sub versus dub? Yeah, how, do we, how do we deal with people saying subs are better <laughs> than dubs? Right? That's yeah, the question. pretty much. Um, I ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, I mean, I like things in Japanese too. Like, there are some things that I want to watch in, in sub and some things that I want to watch in dub. That's fine. I feel like people should be able to watch it however they want, but then like, don't be a jerk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I really like subs too. Yeah, like I, I watch subs all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and most of my first anime experiences were with subs and not dubs. But I'm kind of like, you know, I prefer chocolate ice cream. Does that mean that I'm gonna say no if somebody hands me a scoop of vanilla? Heck no! Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Ice cream is good. It doesn't matter what flavor it is. Yeah. So I feel that way about anime. <laughs> the one criticism that really frustrates me when people are talking about sub versus dub is there's a very common one with sub purists who are like, the English voice actors don't care. Like, they're not trying. I'm like, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're really trying. Like, yeah, that one really bothers me. Because I'm like, my heart. Right? I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> like, how, what, maybe. Have you heard someone who's not trying versus someone who is trying? Because like, uh, that one's annoying. But I try to ignore things. It's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're getting another battery. What? Oh, in the microphone. Hi, Roxas. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Okay, testing one, two, three. Okay. Hey. Uh, He's right? <laughs> a professional. Okay, thanks. Um, he doesn't have to, but he wants to. <laughs> okay, I just have a simple question for both of you. Um, who is your favorite Persona 5 character besides the character that you play, and why? <laughs> Ryuji. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, this is obviously not canon, and I'm not saying that you have to ship it, but I ship Ryuji and On. <laughs> I am not against On with Joker, I think that's also very cute, um, but I just, I really like Ryuji and On. And we recorded all the like, um, romance stuff after everything else, like at the very end of recording, and I kind of like solidified my like, idea that I shipped them together and then they're like all right now we're gonna do the lines where Joker romances you and I was like but what about Ryuji? <laughs> and they were like no you're not dating Ryuji and I was like but I feel like I'm cheating on him. <laughs> um, so yeah I love Ryuji. <laughs> oh god. 
gosh. Well, full disclosure, because I started the game like relatively recently, I haven't gotten super far into it. So I had there's a lot of carrots. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I was going to say one of the few characters I've met thus far is on. Wow, no way. Yeah. Oh, that's and really, that's nice. I mean, she's just so, like, enigmatic and mysterious <laughs> and, like, beautifully misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. She's a really nice voice, I've heard. Tall. I really love tall women. Yeah, thank you. Taste. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I accept Venmo, by the way. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, since you both played Persona 5 and watched the anime, what was your favorite persona that the characters used? I actually haven't watched the anime. <laughs> but we can pretend. Um, I mean, I, the animation was, they could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. Um, I like, okay, I don't know any of their names, but I like the one that's a, a dog. <laughs> Isn't there one that's a dog? <laughs> right? No, in Persona 5, the personas that the characters use. Oh, not the ones that we find in the dungeons. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, then in that case, I like Carmen the best. <laughs> um, I like that she has her two little dudes that she's stepping on. She's like, I'm a dancer. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> um, whatever Ons persona. That's is. Carmen. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Carmen. Yeah, it's a, it's a unanimous decision up here. Clearly I mean, the right answer. Also, that bodysuit's pretty freaking long. <laughs> Uh, yes, I know. I like Ahn's reaction. She doesn't realize she's wearing it until like after she fights in it, and then she's like, wait, what? <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you! Hey. Hi! Uh, so I'm currently playing uh, Persona 5, almost at the end. Um, unfortunately, I'm playing it in Japanese, so I'm unfortunately not hearing your voices. But that is related. <laughs> That's related to what I was going to ask. Uh, so, have you, have either of you gotten a chance to listen to the Japanese uh, voices for Am um, or Sai, and were you able to compare and contrast uh, your performances with the Japanese voice actresses' performances? So, I didn't hear any of the Japanese for a while recording. Um, because they, the way video games work, uh, even if they are JRPGs, they really kind of just let us do our thing. Um, and I eventually heard her voice when we were doing the cutscenes that are like anime, so then those we did like anime where they would like preview the Japanese and then we would match the lip flaps in English. Um, so that's really all I heard of her until like after Persona 5 came out and then they were announcing like Persona 5 R and they released like a Japanese trailer first and I was like, oh, that's her. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've only heard a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, I I'm playing the game in English because I'm a sadomasochist that likes to <laughs> yell at myself. Uh, which I will say, a lot of people ask me, like, oh, is it weird to, like, hear yourself in games or whatever? And I'm like, usually no, but Persona 5 has oh my been, God. Yes. like, the, the one exception to the rule because I it's weird it's to regular. yell at myself. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it is yeah. yeah, it's my regular voice more uh -huh. or less with like more authority. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um but yeah, I mean I guess to be perfectly honest, like even with anime, because I usually if I can try and watch at least a little bit of the sub before I dub a character. And I don't really, I guess, ever really look at it as like one of us is doing a better job than the other. We're just, you know, each doing our best version or take on a character. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to follow up if you uh, if you based your performances on anything that the Japanese uh, did or not. No. When I auditioned, they didn't tell me what I was auditioning for for Persona. Mm -hmm. um, they were just like, we want a high school aged girl who's nice, but not too nice. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I sent in some lines. 
That was like the fastest casting I've ever had happen. It was like literally the same day. They were like, you got it! And I was like, what? <laughs> okay. I got what? Um, so, yeah, I, I just trusted that they liked my audition. And then they just kind of, I trusted the direction that they were giving me. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe they played like a couple of lines when I first got in, just like showing me a, a, a video of her, but yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, and I know for Sai's voice, um, they, you knew what he wanted mm -hmm. and apparently was having a hard time finding it because, you know, Sai is a very intense, authoritative character, but you, she's... You is the name of the client, she's oh, not sorry. talking about me. Yes, you Nama from Atlas, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> not you, no. not Erica. You. Um, and I... Uh, so she needed to, to be able to carry a lot of gravitas, but she's not chronologically very old. You know, it's like she's only mid to late 20s. And so he was having a hard time finding a voice that he felt like could pull off both the age and the authority. And lucky for me, you is an anime fan. Yeah. <laughs> and he had watched Attack on Titan and Ghost in the Shell arise. And uh, when he heard my voice, he decided that that's what he wanted for the character. And so funny enough, this has only happened maybe two or three times in my life. I didn't audition for Persona 5. Wow. It was one of the few roles that I've ever just been offered without having to audition for it. Yeah, I think the reason that the audition process was so fast was because, yeah, it was the same thing. I came in and he was like, oh yeah, I watched Love Live. And I was like, my, the voice I do with Love Live is not the same as this voice at all. So I think they sent it being like, just make sure she can do like something younger sounding. Um, yeah, it was so fast, so he knew what he wanted. Yeah. I feel like he did a good job. He did. I, I mean, I'm biased. Yeah, I'm biased too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. It's really nice to meet the both of you. Uh, I've been listening a lot to both of you more recently. And uh, first question is, is if you want, if you don't mind, uh, how did you two break into voice acting? If you don't mind uh, cliff notes, maybe. <laughs> Uh, and the second question, if you have time, is Elizabeth, how uh, excited are you for Breath of the Wild 2? Well, I'm just going to nip that one in the bud and, and say I can't talk about it. Oh. <laughs> well, no, I was just being excited. But I'm really excited as a fan. That's so cool. And I'm so excited that Zelda has short hair. I know! Short hair. Because I have a lot of game designer friends, and please, I would just like to say very explicitly that all the words that are about to come out of my mouth are my own personal fan conjectures that are not based on any sort of insider info at all. But my game designer friends have told me that it's harder to have a character with long hair as a playable oh, yeah. character uh -huh. because you gotta deal with the mechanics of swinging hair. Uh -huh. So the fact that Zelda oh. has short hair Please, please. So that is my very, very, very unofficial answer. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first part? What was the first uh, question again? How did you two uh, break into uh, oh, right. voice acting? Um, so I, a uh, very abridged version is I had been acting since I was like little, but I thought of it as like a hobby. My mom used to work at an agency when she was like in her 20s, and so she was always like, actors are so annoying, so don't do that as a job. And I was like, okay. Um, so I was acting as a hobby. I never grew out of like cartoons and, and video games and stuff, and I loved telling stories and art. I was doing that also as a hobby. Um, so I was like, maybe I want to make video games. And I went to college for that, and then realized, no, I want to be in the video games, not do the part of the making them. Um, so I switched my major to theater and started finding voiceover classes, and um, I got an internship at a studio it, as like a production intern, just to like see how everything worked. And then they hired me into the production department, and I was like, maybe I should do production. But no, acting is calling me back. Um, and then yeah, kind of all just took off. <laughs> Uh, so I had been doing acting in some form, theatrically or on camera, for many, many, many years. <coughs> Lived in LA, ended up moving to Austin, Texas, and I knew that I needed to be a little bit more creative and open in how I performed if I wanted to still be able to make a living doing it. 
And I had a bunch of friends kind of say like, you know, you play video games, you watch anime, you've got the training. Like, why don't you do voiceover? And I was like, why don't I do voiceover? <laughs> and, you know, luckily for me, I happened to move to like the best state outside of California. Yes. Uh, if you want to get into character-based, you know, voiceover. And I basically did- Texas. Oh, sorry, yeah, Texas, because Funimation is based in Dallas. Um, and uh, many other companies like uh, Gearbox and so forth. Uh, but I basically did a ton of research, put together my own demo reel, and then like marketed the crap out of myself to any company within a certain mile radius that I thought would hire voice actors. And I emailed Funimation once a month, every month, for eight months, <laughs> my demo reel, and like, politely but persistently was like, here are new updates on my career, this is what I'm doing, and I would still love to work with you if you ever have any auditions you think I'd be right for. <laughs> Yo, that's my plan. Even currently, I'm getting a new demo made next week, and I'm so excited to be emailing all these places that I don't work at and be like, hello. I would love to work for you. Here's my voices in a demo. There you go. <laughs> and yeah, finally, after eight months, I got called in to audition for Attack on Titan. Hey. And yeah, that was my first anime role. Oh, <laughs> I'm so lucky. Um, and it, it, it kind of took off from there. Because once you start meeting people, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. it leads to more auditions and more jobs. Well, and, and once you prove that you can do the job and do it well, people talk. And aren't an asshole. And aren't, yes, and you're nice. It's like very important to be like friendly and like genuinely friendly, not the kind of friendly where you're like, I'm only being your friend because I think you can pass me on things. Because we know, we know, we know. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, no, what time is it? Okay, cool. We still got like 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Hello. Hi! Um, if you guys didn't play the characters that you did in Persona 5, is there any other character you think you would have enjoyed? And what was your favorite line from the game speech? Mm. Um, well, so I was talking with the Atlas client. Uh, I feel like it was the first day when I came in. Um, and he was, uh, Erica Lindbeck again, Futaba, had like recently gone in and started recording. And he was like, it's so funny because you look like Futaba and she looks like Ah. And <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So I guess Futaba, who we have the same glasses you don't want to talk to people by, but I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, she's super, super cute. And then my favorite line that like I did in the game? Either or. Mm -hmm. Um, mm, I feel like all of my favorite lines are again when On is acting. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that everybody in the game, except for the Phantom Thieves, are always like, oh yes, I believe you, you're so convincing. And the Phantom Thieves are always like, she's so bad, how's everybody falling for it? Um, yeah, I can't remember specifics though. So. Um... <laughs> No, no, maybe I guess maybe Morgana <laughs> oh, because I love cats yeah, uh -huh. and I've never gotten to be a cat. <laughs> and I would gladly be a cat. Morgana, yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mona, Mona, Mona. Um, and my favorite line, uh, just because it made me laugh so hard personally, was probably it's, it's towards the beginning of the game. And it's when um, Sai and Akechi are like walking out of the police precinct or whatever. And I, I don't remember what they say beforehand, but Akechi's like, oh, come on, don't we have time to at least go for some sushi? And she's like, beat, 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 conveyor belt only. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, it made me laugh really hard uh -huh. when yeah. I was recording it. So. Yeah. She has her priorities. <laughs> That's her compromise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Shield here. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> so, um, with Persona 5 being a game that's something like 100 plus hours long, how did that translate to how much time you ended up spending in a booth? <laughs> <laughs> so much time. So much time. So much time. Um, it, it was 
so long that like it got to the point where I would go in, I was going in like multiple times a week for, for this, like sometimes even just like every day. And it would get towards the end of the week and I'd be like, surely my last session is on Friday. And then Friday would come and they'd be like, all right, see you next week. And I'd be like, okay, surely my last session is next Friday. And that would just like continue for forever. Um, but it was awesome. I like, I always want to like stay with a character that I like for a long time. And yeah, then when we finally did get to the last session, I was like, no, go back. And then it did, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, when, yeah, when you have to record for like every possible, you know, option that somebody might say. Did you guys know that the game is really, really, really long? <laughs> it's so long. Um, yeah, yeah. But I agree with you. It's like I actually prefer those kind of projects. Oh, me too. I'm the sort of person that, like, when I was in theater, you know, I would get super attached yeah. to like my castmates and, you know working on something for that long with people. And when you do voiceover, a lot of times that attachment gets transferred to your characters into the production team because that's what you're seeing. Yeah. Um, and I was very sad to let Valerie and you and everybody go when we're done. Yeah, and a lot of times for great dogs, Valerie. Oh, they have great dogs at PCB. Oh. I love them so much. Studio dogs are the best. Oh, I love them. Um, yeah, a lot of times for video games, I'll go in for like one three hour session and that's it. And then it's over. <laughs> um, so it was super nice to record for multiple months. It was so, it was like, I think I was recording for like six months or something crazy. It was awesome. On talks a lot. <laughs> she says a lot of things. She comes in at the beginning and then she doesn't stop talking for the rest of the game. <laughs> Especially because Joker doesn't talk. So An and Ryuji and Morgana are doing all the talking. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love your shirt. Thank you. It's so cool. Aww. It's a cool persona shirt. Hello, Eric and Elizabeth. Uh, Rox is still my question, so... Uh, <laughs> so I'll just give you the question I give to all my friends who have played Persona and finished. Mm -hmm. The question is, if you could have any video game character that's not for Persona uh -huh. as your Persona, what would it be? <laughs> for example, for me, it's Sam from Undertale. Oh, that's a good one. What, sorry, I mean, what are you saying? It's for who? Sans from Undertale? Uh, have you played Undertale? I have not. You should, it's only like four hours long, it's great. <laughs> they still make games like that? Sans, yeah, it's really good. And Sans is like the easiest boss in the game. Oh, <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah, so easy. Um, uh, so, does it, um, so our persona would like help us fight then, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like everyone's gonna know what I'm gonna pick. What are you gonna pick? I don't know what you're gonna pick. Really? Oh, uh, maybe. I mean, what if I could summon Sora and then we could just hang out? Would I have to summon my persona when we're battling, or could I just be like, persona? What's up, Sora? <laughs> Let's have a tea party together. <laughs> Uh, I reserve the right to change my mind in future panels and podcast interviews. Uh, but the first thing that just came to my mind was Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, super speed. And I feel like I could like ball them up and then throw them at people. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like a round shuriken. Yeah. Also, you'd have like great quips while you're like doing your battle. You'd have yeah. all the fun. Oh my god, the put downs. Yeah, that would be great. He'd be he'd be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Big on Atlas. Crossover? And you get to go Super Saiyan. Yeah. Super <laughs> uh, thank you. We have five minutes left. So, thank you. Thank you. We're going to try and answer quickly. Speed round. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming to the con. Uh, big fan for both of you. Thank you. Sadly, I couldn't I do my Goro cosplay this year. But, uh, I'm just going to imagine you in it while you speak. Yes. I appreciate Pancakes. that. Uh, so, you look very handsome. Okay. That really is a confidence boost. Uh, boy, I actually forgot my question for both of you, so I'm just going to start with the, the down the road question for Erica. Uh-huh. Uh, for V3, it's a simple, why did you have to hurt me after that first trial? <laughs> um, you should ask the company that, because they also didn't tell me the truth about the game until I was in there, and I was very sad. Yeah, uh, I kind of played 
I got it with a cool person and just kept silent when everyone else played B3. <laughs> yeah. And I won that. I love it. Thank hey. you. Oh, sorry, I forgot the other question. Yeah. That's okay. Just want to say you. big thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hey, guys. Um, I was wondering when you were talking about being alone in the booth. Uh, mm -hmm. Since Persona is a game that involves so much uh, dialogue between characters and so many instances where characters are interrupting each other or reacting to things that other people are saying, how do you or how does the director try to uh, make that realistic when it's just you recording by yourselves? Um, so we have to trust the director a lot. Uh, and Val was great. She, uh, we also had the client in the room mm -hmm. uh, for Persona, which is very, very helpful because they know the entire game. And so it can be like, wait, what's going on here? And the client will have a very <laughs> detailed explanation. Um, it is hard. a luxury that yeah. you do not always get. No, no, a lot of times the client's not there and the director's just like, I think it's, maybe it's this, I don't know, let's do it. Um, but yeah, uh, Persona was nice because at least the other characters' lines were there, but you only have time to really skim them. In some games I've done, they only give you your own lines and then they're just like, go. And I'm like, okay. Wait, what am I saying that's in response yeah. to? Yeah, who am I talking to or anything? And they're like, ah. Your, li your line is yes. Yeah. But what am I saying yes to? <laughs> exactly. um, so you get really good at like very quickly reading. Um, sometimes there will be little notes on the side that like say a little bit about like uh, she's being defensive or like something like that. Um, and then yeah, you just really trust that they remember what everybody else is sounding like and they uh, direct you in a way that makes it all flow together nicely. Yeah. yeah, it is kind of great. They're, they're like the master painters. They are. I mean, we, we see the little picture and they see the big picture and it's amazing how it all comes together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do we, do we need to we have one minute? One minute. Okay. Last one. I'm so sorry everybody else. Ah. I have a um, quick question here. Yes. for you. And it wasn't answered already. Um, did you voice Star from Star Wars The Force? I wish. No. <laughs> thank you. That's a big compliment. I want to eventually voice someone like her. So thank you. Okay, really quick. Okay, real fast. Last one. Uh, if your characters had a secret, what would they be? A secret? Yeah. What would you think it would My be? My character has so many secrets. You mean another secret? Yeah. Um. on the run from the mob. That's why they moved from America to Japan. Explains it off here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, she secretly hates pants. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. She just wants to wear a dress, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thank you. I think, I think it's 5.30, so I think so we gotta wrap it up. Sorry, guys. But feel free, if you come to the signing later yes. this evening, feel free to ask your question. We have our crafts in half an hour, yeah. both of us. So you can ask us questions, yes. All right. Thank well, you thank so you much guys. for coming, guys. Thank, thank you for loving for so much as we do. Parasona!